Uh, Carol, good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm good, lad. I mean, Debbie sounds very mouth-watering, so you might keep in mind for that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm uh, almost as mouth watering as um, this Sunday in the Gaelic rounds because this time it's for real. Whatever about um, whatever about the shadow boxing that happened last week, and I know John Kyle is a pains to point out that the team went out to win. I totally believe that, but this time there's silverware on the line, and Tipperary had already qualified for this game, so they will be even more motivated than they were last time out. What's your sense of anticipation ahead of this one? Yeah, it's a, a massive game for both counties and uh, from the Limerick point of view, I think there's only three players with uh, Munster medals and uh, there's a possibility of, of uh, uh, as the man says, three titles on the table this year for Limerick. Uh, yeah, go, go, looking at the last game, you know, tactically, tactically Tipperary had their home up done uh, brilliantly and, uh, you know, I suppose the big talk was the four big guns that Limerick can play and I suppose they brought two on and, you know, Tipperary crossed the line. Tipperary crossed the line without the likes of, uh, you know, John McGrath, Jack Morris, Bubbles Dwyer. You know, they didn't ignite. But, uh, you know, whereas Limerick had four to come in, Limerick still, ha- uh, Tipperary still have a lot up front also. So, you know, it's a mouth-watering game. And, you know, as you said, there's no shadow boxing. Uh, this and uh, uh, winner take on. We were talking about this a bit earlier on, and I was trying to make the point that Limerick have much more to advance this from th- this game from the last game but if you really go into a match like Tipperary where you are already qualified for something you're not fully at it either so I was making the counter argument that actually we don't know how good this Tipperary team can be when everything is on the line and they're going full bore in a match like this because this is it's not quite knockout at this stage but it's the first time where it's really properly meaningful something is specifically on the line on the day yeah, without a doubt. And to be fair to Tipperary, they're the only team that's left in the country presently that hasn't been beaten and they're the most consistent team. And I'd imagine, I'd imagine they want to maintain that record. And, uh, but they would definitely be t- facing a different Limerick, a full strength Limerick, uh, this Sunday is a different, a different kettle of fish. And my, my only concern for Tipperary, right, is, okay, they did win the 21s last year. You know, we're not really seeing a sprinkle of them come yet, number one. And, uh, Bomber Maher is going to be a massive loss for Tipperary because his work ethic any time he goes out for Tipperary is absolutely huge. So his replacement is going to be interesting. I'd imagine it could be Niall O'Mara or possibly Dan McCormack and also a cornerback. They need to get a new cornerback because Carl Barrett is out injured. He's going to be a huge loss. Now, usually he's great at the sweeping role. Was under pressure the last day on Aaron Galan, but he's usually not too far away from James Barry. So, as you said, you know, everything's on the line, and not only that, but, you know, the history and tradition down through the years. So, it, it's the makings of a cracker, really. I'm sure John Kiley, in the build up or thinking hypothetically about this Tipperary team, would have had a man pointed out that was going to take Bonner Maurer. How does this change the defensive thinking for Limerick? I, I, I don't think so. I, I don't. I think in the, in the modern inter county game, you know, just too many forwards, too many good players usually up front and you can't just pinpoint one, okay, you're after mentioning Bomber Maher, but I suppose who hold them slightly under par the last there, uh, you know, they have to get a fellow to Dave Seth, John O'Dwyer, Jake Morris, James, Jason Ford, uh, Seamus Flanagan and John McGrath, so uh, I, I don't think they're just looking at one, you know, the temporary forwards, uh, you know, looking at them on paper. They look very good. Canlon the last, they look very sharp. Got a goal on about four points. Jason Ford looked very good. Though they were the top marksmen the last day, but still, you know, you've the bubbles, you've Jeff Morris and John McGrath. They all need serious attention. So I don't think he'll be just coming in and one. Uh, I'd say from Limerick's point of view, really, they probably want to follow for consistency as they were this time last year. And I suppose other opposition are looking at Limerick this year and they're probably saying, right, they don't appear to be consistent as they were last year. Okay, probably the two most consistent defenders will be possibly Sean Finn and Bond. So that will give Tipperary a bit of hope as well. Why aren't they as consistent as last year? Where are the inconsistencies? I, I actually think, uh, looking at Tip the last day now, to be fair, you know, they squeezed up and on the puck outs. I think Nicky Quaid probably only took about three shot puck outs against Tipperary uh, the last day versus... 
about 23 in the league. So they're doing their homework tactically and they're fine calling Limerick and they're trying to pick any bit of weaknesses that they may have in defence. So it's hitting all is down to, to your defenders. It's about, about the amount of pressure uh, the Tipperary fouls are going to put on. But as I said, you know, they obviously have their homework done hugely because they're a totally different team to the last time I saw them play in the league versus what I saw a fortnight ago. The immediate thought from all of us when we were watching the last Tip Limerick game was that John Kiley obviously left to be players on the sideline because you know they wanted to rest up for the Munster final or whatever it may be. He hedged his bets. Is it definitely a case that everybody comes back in now that the, the likes of uh, Keane Lynch does get uh, back in? Like, are, are they all starters now? Oh, I would see the four boys going straight in. And, uh, you know, the first guy you mentioned, Keane Lynch, okay, midfielder, but the influence that he can have on the game from the middle of the park and the runs that he makes is going to be hugely dynamic for Limerick. And if they can get that fluidity and that flow and that bit of consistency, they will take a bit of stopping. But Tipperary will have a bit of saying that, uh, you know, Noel McGrath the last did okay -ish. Michael Breen was taken off. So it's a big area in the middle of the field. So I'd imagine if Limerick are winning that battle, you know, it's a big plus for uh, how impressed have you been by Tip so far this season and, and what is the truth about where they are because there was one school of thought that they came out all guns blazing at the start of the Munster Hurling Championship and it's very hard to maintain that level for the whole championship so I wonder did they try and set their stall out and peak very early on just to make sure that the team had momentum and then hope that the hurling would evolve over the course of the championship and sometimes that works out and that's exactly maybe what happened with uh, Limerick last year that their, their hurling evolved every, the confidence kind of flow through the team. Are Tipperary following a similar template or have we seen the best of Tip already this year? I think, well, first of all, they're a new manager and a new, a new management team and in fairness to Liam Sheedy, he was gone for a few years and I think uh, it was a, set, a settling in period for him as well during the league campaign with the new modern game, the new tactics. As I pointed out a while ago, I was at the Limerick and Tip game and in fairness, uh, Liam Sheedy and Tammy Dunn, it was like looking at rabbits in the headlights. And in fairness, four days later, he added to his management team with Eamon, and he also bought uh, Owen Kelly in as a uh, uh, free takers coach, but I'd say he's, in, he's a lot more influenced than that. And I, I just think that combination, getting it tactically right, and obviously the ability that Liam Sheedy has, uh, any manager should have really to get the best out of every player. Looking at him that day in the league, they look physically very fit, just lacked a bit of quality tactically and the hurling. And, you know, obviously he was aware of that. He confronted us. He took action. Now you're, you're seeing the, rule, the real Tipperary in the real form. And I actually think there's more in Tipperary because, as I said, pointed out, the last bit, you know, probably four, four out of the six forwards probably played under par and they still went on to cross the line. Just to kind of go back to, to Limerick, you kind of mentioned the work that Owen Kelly's been doing there on the forwards. I'd be interested to hear what you think about what work Limerick have done on their forwards this year because it could be said, looking at the early games, and maybe due to his brilliance, but do Limerick rely too much on Aaron Gillan? Yeah, uh, possibly. Not. No, in fairness to Kyle Hayes, you know, he started off, I thought, with a very good league campaign and did well in the, even the last and the first half and possibly hurling better this year than last year. Uh, they're probably struggling a bit uh, with the role that Peter Casey is trying to play. It doesn't seem to be as consistent as it was last year. So, full enough, you could see Angela Ann Connor, Graham O'Kahey full and possibly, possibly Pat Ryan who come in the last day. You know, any ball he got, he had questions he got inside the corner back at ease on two or three occasions so I have a funny feeling he could get the, the, the nod uh, for Sunday and you know their half forward line they are going to take stop and with Hegarty, Kyle Hayes and Tom Morrissey they're going to be handful for any for any three but having said that 5, 6 and 7 for Tipperary Brendan Maher, Padraig Maher, Ron Maher definitely Padraig Maher the last set two points in play you know so that's going to be a huge battle uh, 5, 6, 7 versus Limerick, 10, 11, 12, and it could be h huge influence whoever's going to win the game someday. And so how do, if you, uh, how do you swing that balance in Limerick's favour if you're the Limerick management team this week? Uh, for a well, I'd be honest with you, possibly what I, what I would have done the last day, I would have probably went to small bit more direct, 
Uh, you know, as I said, a lot of teams have Limerick kind of half copped. They're, they're having fine calm. They're putting serious pressure on them, and it's breaking down for Limerick. So sometimes you have to go direct. Tipperary went direct the last day and got an awful lot of joy from it. You know, if you have Graham Mulcahy, Harmon in around her, and Aaron Galan, they will do damage if the ball comes in fairly quick as well. So okay. if I was John Kiley, I would be going a small bit direct. Just to keep the opposition guessing and then whoever you're playing next guessing as well. Exactly. You know, the Limerick has perfected the running game and breaking the tackles. That's fine. But, you know, as I said, you know, you need a small bit more than that. Uh, possibly thinking outside the box, throwing Shane Dowling inside full forward for a small while, you know, where he doesn't have to do a whole pile of running could suit him. I think he's tailor made probably for James Barry because James Barry is no road runner either, but a good solid full back. And I think Dowling could get a bit of joy if they went back a uh, quick ball and half back to in around the house, see how they fare out. I, I would see nothing wrong with that either, but I'm not John Kiley. I see a fair bit of similarity between the, the two managers um, in their will to win and just how they, they view the game. Um, neither of them obviously want to lose this and for once it seems like there's a bit more on this game than maybe there has been for a couple of recent Munster finals because you could see Limerick needing that just reminder of the confidence they had last year and you can see Tip wanting to go straight through the front door because that's the easiest way for them not to have any doubt about what they're doing. So defeat actually will matter for whoever loses at the weekend. Oh, hugely, to be fair, like, the solid spade of spade, both teams want, they want the easier, softer route. And the easier, softer route here is jump the fence on the win your game and you're straight into semi final. And, you know, it's Liam Sheedy's first time back after a good number of years and uh, he's back in the mold and uh, he will want to go the direct route. John Kiley will also, but it will be a huge, it will be a huge uh, dint to Limerick's confidence if they lose Sunday because that will be effectively three championship matches they will be after losing and still find themselves in the All Ireland series. Do you expect this to be the All Ireland final as well? This this particular game? Yeah. No, I think Cork would have a huge say it when they, when they go to Crow Park and uh, Kilkenny. And I think Dublin as well, I'm watching them very closely. I think they could have a little say as well, quite when they, once they get to Crow Park. But definitely Cork. Cork will be very dangerous when they get to Crow Park. All right, that, that is interesting. Um, all right, Kieran, enjoy the game. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. You're very welcome. Thanks, lads. That's uh, Limerick legend Kieran Kerry giving us uh, some thoughts on that. The Kilkenny Extra game throws in at four. Limerick and Tip throws in at two. Haven't heard anybody talking about uh, Dublin as potential sleepers or even potential uh, banana skins for anybody yet. Well, they've been a uh, banana skin for Galway, haven't they? So they've got that form this season. But one thing we have heard a lot is people saying, Cork, watch them. A lot of people have been on that bandwagon and there'll, there'll be a lot of smiling pundits at the end of the year of Cork and the All-Ireland. We should point out as well that um, Tipperary are not, of course, the only unbeaten team in the Championship, as was uh, said there, because Wexford, mm -hmm. at, uh, as of this point, are still uh, unbeaten. And if they win, they'll be like, they'll think of themselves suddenly as like, well, screw you, we're not in a semi-final. Yeah, for sure. And there's a good chance it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Way like, better uh, chance this year than there was last year. Yeah. That's for sure, and it, this, even at the outset you're saying this is a closer game than Kilkenny Galway would have been in the Leinster final last year, despite the fact that that was a draw on, on the first day, so it's going to be a cracking encounter, brilliant day certainly, brilliant weekend's GA. Yeah, um, 